Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash patchworkheartministry today. Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry present Journeys in Faith. Now, here's Andy Santis. Hi, welcome to Journeys in Faith. This is Anne DeSantis. It's so great to be here. And I hope that all of you are doing well during the pandemic that we're all going through. And I'm really excited and grateful to Fiat Ministry Network and Ken Kahoski and also Patchwork Heart Ministry, my friend Bill Snyder, who are the two people who are actually helping to bring this TV show to us through those two wonderful networks. So thanks for joining me. I'm so excited because tonight I have a guest who is doing so much in the world of pro-life. Her name is Dr. Monique Ribeiro. She is a pro-life OBGYN from the greater Philadelphia area. She is a speaker and an author. And I'm just, as I said, so grateful for her to be with us for this hour on Journeys in Faith. So welcome, Dr. Monique. It's so great to be with you. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me today. Yes, we have a lot to talk about because, uh, you know, during this pandemic, the issue of protecting human life doesn't go away. And I know that you know that and have been praying so hard uh, for the, uh, the cause of uh, protecting human life from conception until natural death. I thought maybe for the people who don't know you, Dr. Monique, we have people from all over. Uh, you and I are from the greater Philadelphia area, but we have people from all over the United States and beyond. I thought you could start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and your faith journey. Absolutely. So I um, am a cradle Catholic. I was born into the Catholic faith and I really just kind of practice my faith like a cafeteria Catholic, just picking and choosing what parts of it to live by for a really long time. Um, I ultimately became a physician and I was practicing and trained as just a normal gynecologist. And I was doing all the things that normal gynecologists do. Uh, writing contraceptives, referring people for infertility treatments and IVF. And uh, in the midst of all of that, having my children and getting married and living my life, um, ultimately, I found myself in the middle of a marriage that was kind of crumbling. And God really stepped in and just completely redeemed my marriage. And gave me this sense of peace and filled the holes that um, I was feeling and uh, allowed me to really just focus on him and focus on healing our marriage. And it was just really beautiful. I was so, so grateful that I decided I needed to do something for God. And so what I did around that time, I heard about Abby Johnson's unplanned book and I had read the book and, um, it really helped me to understand that there is a way to be outside of abortion centers that is kind, compassionate, loving, caring, and that actually makes a huge difference. And so I felt called 
in order to pay back God for what he had done in my life, I felt called to go and pray outside of this abortion center. At that time, honestly, not thinking that it would be anything more than just going once or twice and praying. But when I showed up, it happened to be the day after the patriarch of the pro-life community for Philadelphia, uh, Mr. John Stanton, he had passed away. And what I didn't know is that this gentleman had spent years going for daily mass and praying, asking God to send a pro-life OBGYN. So when I showed up that day after his death and his son asked me, who are you and what do you do? And the first words out of my mouth were, I'm a pro-life OBGYN. It, he was kind of taken aback and he was like, my pop sent you. And I had no idea who his father was or his backstory or what he had to do with pro-life community, but it, he really challenged me that, that day because my plan was to move my family back to Texas and to be with my siblings and um, to hopefully strengthen our marriage there with a lot more support. But uh, his eldest son, Patrick, challenged me and said, no, you've really got to pray about it. And he went off into his prayer circle asked a lot of people to pray that I wouldn't go anywhere, that I'd stay in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the month, you know, after prayerfully considering, we realized that we really were called to stay in Philadelphia. And mm -hmm. um, the following day, Patrick dropped off at my office a book about Napier technology. And although I thought that I was a pro-life OBGYN because I was against abortion, I honestly was not truly a pro-life OBGYN because I was still writing for contraceptives. I was still referring for IVF because I honestly had no idea how else to treat these patients because that's how I would have been trained. And um, when I read through that layman's book about NAPR technology, I was blown away that there were actually viable treatments that I could use as a gynecologist to address every single issue that I had been treating with contraceptives without the use of contraceptives, without the use of IVF. And they were really seemed to be very good treatments that seemed to be very effective according to what was written in this book. And so I was very interested. It kind of prompted me to go to the drug cupboard and pull out all of these birth control pills and really take a look at the side effects and everything else since now there was a viable alternative. And when I read them, it was like reading them for the first time. Uh, because when I learned about contraceptives in residency, I didn't think that there was any other option. So I never truly paid attention to, okay, what is the mechanism of action? Is this possibly an abortifacient when it's used in this way? And, and my eyes were really opened that day and I realized, yeah, every single hormonal contraceptive can possibly be an abortifacient. And uh, that was it. I, I decided I needed to learn how to practice according to neighbor technology. And that ultimately led to me practicing in a separate office, being in private practice, which ultimately led to me owning the private practice. And that gave me the freedom to utilize the practice to help other people. And that initial stop at the abortion center that I thought would only be a day or two ultimately led me to join with Patrick Stanton, John Stanton's eldest son, and begin the first downtown 40 Days for Life. And uh, we went on from there to hold 40 Days for Life at both of the two major abortion centers in downtown Philadelphia. And now, we do 40 Days for Life twice a year, and we also have a sidewalk servants program so that people are praying every day around the year um, for an end to abortion and offering men and women viable resources and alternatives so that they don't have to choose abortion. Thank you for sharing. And I know that the people that are watching, um, this is valuable information for people in our greater Philadelphia area here. I know there's a bunch of people probably watching, but also beyond because, you know, abortion is an issue throughout throughout the United States and, and in the world too. And um, especially during this time of the pandemic, unfortunately, I know you and I were talking earlier. I mean, it's still happening um, even during this pandemic. 
although many things aren't happening, abortions are still happening. Um, I wanted to tell those watching as well, you were mentioning your practice. Um, I think you have a wonderful practice. I would like to uh, just ask people to check out your website. It's called naturalwomenshealth.com. Uh, it's a wonderful practice in Meadowbrook, which is out of Holy Redeemer Hospital uh, in right outside the Northeast Philadelphia area. So please check that out. Uh, as she said, she is a pro-life OBGYN. So um, it, it, you're doing just amazing work. And I know we have several different uh, websites to ask people to check out. Um, the other one is that you mentioned the sidewalk servants. Um, and that one is sidewalkservantsphilly.com for those who do live in the Philly kind of like South Jersey area. Can, can you expand a little bit more on that? Dr. Absolutely. So the sidewalk servants program is initially when we started doing 40 days for life, we were really happy with what we experienced as far as the number of people who were coming to pray outside of the abortion centers, the number of people who were kind of being motivated to take a stand, this so important issue and actually stand up for those who have no voice to speak themselves. And we were really saddened by the fact that when people finish the 40 days for life, oftentimes what would happen is they would just kind of drop off and go back to their day-to-day -day lives. And, you know, the emails wouldn't continuously happen, reminding people, hey, this is another safe that happened. This is why it's important that we're there. And so then again, at the next 40 days for life, later in the year, people would jump back in again. But what we noticed was the abortion centers were pretty much having a party at the end of every 40 days for life. They were celebrating the fact that we weren't there because when we were there, uh, so many more people would walk away or choose life for their children or look to the alternatives. But when we weren't there, the sidewalk was just empty. It was full of silence. There was nobody to question them in any way to say, hey, you know, is this really what you want to do? Is there anything we can do to help you? We have all of these resources, all of these alternatives, all these people who just really want to help you. Can we please help you? And I just encountered so many women, especially through abortion pill reversal, and I would ask them, hey, where did you go to get this abortion pill? And especially when they would say, hey, I went to the Women's Center at 777 Apple Tree, or I went to 12th and Locust Planned Parenthood, it would just kill me because I knew that if they had gone while we were there, they would have known that they didn't have to choose this. And they wouldn't be, you know, last minute searching for a way to possibly save their child. Um, but that led us to creating the Sidewalk Servants through the creation of the sidewalk servants, we came up with this website and the website was a method of just educating people about all things pro-life. It has links to multiple videos which show how abortions take place. There's nothing gruesome. It's all in cartoon form. It's very appropriate. Um, we have links to all sorts of resources and groups that can help women who are post-abortive and help women who are considering abortion to start off with. We have links um, showing uh, witnesses of people who have experienced abortion and through silent no more and they're regretting their abortion. So there's many, 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 many different types of links on that website and they all take you to really fantastic places that can really educate you. Because if you're out there and you're trying to pray or even if you're praying at home, understanding what the problem really is and where you can focus your prayer is very helpful. Thank you. And that uh, prayer is so important. So I'd like to ask and invite people who are watching to really consider if you haven't before um, to praying for the end of abortion, because, you know, life does begin at conception. I mean, a lot of people, that's where um, some people debate it and say, well, you know, if, if it's just a blob of cells or something, I know Dr. Monique, you've heard that before, but you know, it is a person. And as people of faith, and a lot of people who are watching who are Catholic, you know, if we are Catholic, this is part of who we are, you know, is realizing that that child uh, is important and does have a right to life. So um, 
it, it means so much to me. And I know to Fiat Ministry Network, Dr. Monique Ribeiro, that you're part of this uh, show this evening. Um, so I wondered also if you could just talk a little bit about something called Ladies Love Life. And I would invite people to check out lady, ladieslovelife.com. And I'm excited for them to find out about that. Absolutely. So last summer, it just came upon me that we really needed to have a pro-life women's conference for the local Philadelphia community, Philadelphia, New Jersey, kind of the tri-state area, Delaware, and to welcome women to hear about all the different aspects of the pro-life work and ministry and um, to try to figure out where their personal space was that they could step into and really make a difference in their community. And so without having a single in-person meeting from the end of July to October, I think we met purely on Messenger. And it was, you know, about five or six of us who had just all volunteered to participate and to throw this thing together. And we created, with God's assistance, a beautiful one day women's conference. And we had a, a beautiful place for it to be held. It was all donated. All of the funds that were raised from this went to what we called the Ladies Love Life Fund. And the purpose of this fund was to offer abortion vulnerable women. So that would be women who feel like they can only go to Planned Parenthood or to an abortion center to have care. And so these women who felt like, oh gosh, I don't have any money or I don't have insurance. And so I can't go anywhere else. I need to go to Planned Parenthood. I wanted to be able to offer them care completely for free in my office. So we created this Ladies Love Life Fund. And when people are standing outside of these abortion centers, they hand out these little cards and they let these women know, hey, you don't have to come here for care. You can go to Natural Women's Health and you can receive care 100% for free. We won't charge you for the visit. We won't charge you for whatever labs that are associated with your visit. You know, if you have insurance, we won't charge you for your copay. You know, whatever it is that we can do to support you and help you, we want to do that for you so that you no longer have to come here. Because we realize that when a woman creates a relationship with Planned Parenthood or one of these abortion facilities, then when she has a positive pregnancy test, that is where she will go. And she will never get advice from that facility to lift her or tell her that she's strong enough or that she's smart enough or that you know they have help for her or that she can walk through this time period with support and then she can decide whether or not she wants to parent her child or give her child for adoption um, they will never give her those options however instead they will say you really need to consider abortion because this is not a good time for you because in their mind, every abortion is dollar signs and they make nothing off of a referral to an abortion, to an adoption center. They only make money if you choose abortion. So we wanted to give these women another way out and to allow them to really experience the care that we offer at Natural Women's Health on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, you walk into this waiting area, you're sitting there, there are beautiful books in front of you that just are there to uplift you and educate you and just feed your soul. There's none of the trashy magazines that are talking about, you know, everything that you really don't need to fill your mind with. And then you're sitting there in this room, which is being diffused with awesome organic essential oils. You have the opportunity to have a cup of coffee or tea while you're waiting. Then the receptionist will greet you in such a loving and um, just honoring way. You're welcomed into the office. You get to, you know, fill out all your forms and whatnot. And then you get to spend time with me in the office. We don't ask you to get undressed and wait in a paper gown where you're uncomfortable and, you know, you feel 
like somebody is invading your space. No, we meet in the office, you're fully clothed. We have a full conversation about what's important to you and what you're concerned about. And um, we address everything, not just the GYN issues, but what's going on in your life? What are your relationships like? What is your faith background like? How can we best support you? And then we move on to the physical exam and whatever tests we need to do, and then you get to go home. But it's not a five minute visit or a two minute visit. It's at least a 20 to 30 minute visit every time you come. And we wanted these women who have been just so neglected in so many parts of their life um, to really feel loved and to feel honored. So that's why we're offering. That's what it's all about. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of the work you're doing. And I thank you from my heart for, um, for just honoring people because that's what it's all about. It's, it's uh, recognizing that, as I said a little bit ago, that life does be begin at conception. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. there's no doubt for those who are watching, if you're questioning that, um, I don't think so, but, uh, but just to uh, reach out to Dr. Monique Ribeiro, and she was just describing a little bit about how she practices medicine and, and deals with patients. So I invite you again to check out naturalwomenshealth.com. And then the other website that I mentioned was sidewalkservantsphilly.com. They're for, for people that are from the greater Philadelphia, South Jersey area, and you'd like to get involved in the pro-life movement. Now, for those who are watching who are not from Philadelphia, but maybe they've heard of 40 Days for Life, I wondered if you could share anything there for those who are outside of Pennsylvania or New Jersey, how they can get more involved in the pro-life movement. Absolutely. 40 Days for Life is an amazing outreach. And it's so amazing because it is based on prayer, fasting, and a public outreach. And um, it's been so effective. Thousands and thousands and thousands of babies have been saved worldwide through this effort. And it all began with just a few people sitting around a table trying to figure out what on earth to do because the abortion numbers were going up in their town. And they decided that they themselves would commit to doing a 24-hour vigil for 40 days, simply based on the 40 days that just show up over and over and over in the Bible. And so this was a very much prayer, fasting, biblical outreach, and just kindness and loving compassion that they showed to these women. And what they realized was that while they were there, the numbers dropped significantly. It was a very hard thing to do because they were taking on most of the shifts themselves. They never anticipated that anybody would be interested in following in their footsteps, but it turned out that many, many, many pro-lifers were very interested in doing what they had done. And so now it has expanded greatly. It initially started off as a few campaigns. Now it is just all over the United States, all over the world. It's an international um, event every year, twice a year. And it's so effective, so beautiful. And it's just so peaceful and loving law abiding. And uh, it's a wonderful thing to be involved with. And there are whisperings that, you know, in the future, it won't be just a twice a year thing, but that they may consider doing a year round 365 day, 40 days for life as well. So hopefully that will pass. And uh, I think that would definitely be a wonderful thing. So anybody can get involved with 40 days for life. 40daysforlife.com is their major website. And you can um, just log on there and get all the information that you need. And I would just add, thank you. Uh, also, that if you haven't seen Unplanned yet, the movie, please make it a point to learn about Unplanned, which is the story of Abby Johnson. Uh, she's on all the social media platforms. If you haven't heard of Abby Johnson, I know a lot of you already know who she is. But please go go and see, or you know, get it on. Um, on Google, check it out, please. On uh, Amazon on Prime. Prime. Amazon Prime. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Now we do have to take a break, but before we do, I have an invitation for everybody that's watching, uh, talking about wanting to enrich your Catholic faith, wanting to learn more and wanting to grow. There's a great opportunity through Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry called Discover Your Mission. And if you go to patreon.com slash uh, patchwork heart ministry, you will learn a lot more about this opportunity 
where every single month you can be enriched by wonderful Catholic speakers. Uh, so please check it out. And I know that we're going to be taking that break just in a minute. So join us back again here with Dr. Monique Rivero, pro-life OBGYN, Amanda Santis, and we will see you in a few minutes. Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash Patchwork Heart Ministry today. Well, the St. Raymond Anatas Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith is an expression and an application from the Mercedarian Religious Order. And what we do is outreach to families in crisis and our initial mission is to families and individuals affected by divorce and separation. We're doing special outreach right now online. What we're doing is we are uh, having these monthly online support groups for uh, you know, individuals who are affected by divorce and separation. The divorce group is on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we have another group at the end of the month, the last Thursday of each month, and that's at 8 o'clock at night, uh, Eastern Standard Time, for adult children of divorce. The focus of those groups are prayer, reflection, sharing in a safe place, and also attended by a Mercedarian friar and myself, and guided by the teachings of the church. Everyone, it's Ann DeSantis here to tell you about my new online TV show called Journeys in Faith. Thanks to Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Radio, I'll be interviewing some amazing guests who'll share with all of us their journeys in faith. It's going to be great, and I can't wait for you to be introduced to some truly good people who are working hard to bring deeper faith to others. It's all about relationship with God and living out our mission as intentional disciples. Join me on Fridays, Eastern Time, for Journeys in Faith, 8.30 to 9.30. Subscribe at Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry on both Facebook and YouTube. I'll see you Friday and have a great week. God bless. Hi, welcome back to Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis and here with Dr. Monique Ribeiro. She is a pro-life OBGYN from the greater Philadelphia area, doing wonderful work. She's also an author and a speaker. She's done so much um, great work to help the cause of pro-life, and I'm grateful to her. Um, now, I just have to address something that came during the commercial break, is that you saw a commercial there for the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith that's located in the greater Philadelphia area. And I happen to be the director for that foundation. We are connected with the Mercedarian Friars, who just so happened to be my guest last week on uh, Journeys in Faith. And what we do is we make outreach to families in crisis. As we know, you know those who are affected by um, pro-life, you know, people who are contemplating abortion are, are people who are in crisis. So we are a pro-life organization. And we also make ministry to those who are affected by divorce and separation. So if you happen to have a friend, if you yourself, um, need that outreach, I just invite you to check out our website at nonatas.org. Uh, as I said, I'm the director. Be happy to, to talk with you. And uh, the Mercedarian Friars are the ones that 
uh, have started this foundation, very grateful to them. So just want to make sure that you just take the time to check out what we do because we really do care. And if you have any friends or family affected by divorce, um, please reach out. So back to Dr. Monique, so grateful to you. And um, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about NAPRO technology. I know that's something very big in uh, pro-life and people who are watching may need to know more about that. Absolutely. So I only learned about NAPRO technology, like I said, when I read the book that Patrick Stanton had dropped off at my office, and it was a fantastic layman's explanation about NAPRO technology and what exactly it was. NAPRO technology is a method, it's a pro-life method of treating women's health problems. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, the person who started this, Dr. Hilgers, began this sort of uh, treatment or the idea of these treatments in a response to Humani Vitae. So um, Pope Paul VI had put out an encyclical where he challenged physicians and men and women of science to create methods of treating men and women's medical issues without the use of contraceptives, without the use of anything that would go against life. And he took this very seriously and he began to do research on the Billings method, which was at that time a popular natural family planning method where you would evaluate your cervical mucus to have an understanding of when you're ovulating and when you're not ovulating. And by evaluating the Billings method, he began to realize that quite often women that had particular medical problems had very similar charts, meaning that their bleeding patterns were similar, the length of their cycle was similar, the amount of mucus that they produced was similar, and they had very similar symptoms and issues that they were dealing with. So he decided to start checking hormone levels throughout the cycle, and then he noted that they also had similar hormonal patterns as well. Then with looking at this information, he decided, okay, what happens if we just try and bring things back to normal? So if your hormone levels are low, trying to supplement back with natural hormones to bring them back to what would normally be a normal level, or if they're too high, trying to do things to bring those levels down. And he realized that for many of these women, it solved a lot of the issues that they were dealing with. And so that was kind of the beginning of Napro technology, and he has done so much research. He's done so many scientific studies. There are so many people who have studied this alongside him and under him. And I've just been so blessed by Napro technology to be able to offer care for every gynecologic issue without the use of contraceptives. And what I realize now is that the way that I was trained to practice all throughout residency, medical school, was by using contraceptives, we weren't really looking for the underlying reason for the issues. We were just saying, okay, this is something that is not cancerous, so let's just shut down the cycle and eliminate the symptoms. But when you do that and you just hide the symptoms, what happens is later on in life, when you naturally want to get off of those birth control pills and say you're trying to start a family, all of those medical issues that you had been hiding previously are now showing themselves again. And then you need to deal with them at that point. But even then you're not used to dealing with them because you're used to shutting down your system. So then you turn to IVF because they say, oh, well, there's something hormonally going on, but we don't want to address that. So the only way you'll get pregnant is if you have IVF. And it's really, it's crazy. So um, rather than doing that, we prefer to try and really understand what's going on in a person's cycle and in their overall health and try and address these issues at the very root cause if possible, and as much as possible to try and find natural ways to address these issues. It's great that you address that because I know that that must be a question for so many people. Uh, I think we're in a culture right now where people do wanna to try to do things that are better for them and maybe not necessarily uh, chemically based. So um, what a better way than to try out NAPRO technology 
And also please go to naturalwomenshealth.com. Even if they're not from the greater Philadelphia area, I'm sure there's some resources on your website that can direct them to, uh, to help. Absolutely. And especially now in the midst of COVID, we're really expanding our reach because we're beginning to do a lot more telemed. So people who have United Healthcare Insurance, that insurance company has really gone above and beyond. Mm -hmm. And they have offered that any person with United Healthcare Insurance can be treated by any provider all throughout the United States. So I can treat someone mm -hmm. in, you know, one of multiple states throughout the country if they have United Healthcare insurance and their insurance will cover the cost of the visit, which is just unbelievable. Um, as time goes on, you know, I think uh, telemedicine is something that most physicians are getting into. And I've joined a group, which is really fantastic, called mycatholicdoctor.com. Mm -hmm. And my Catholic doctor provides physicians in almost every state, and they also have fertility care practitioners to teach you how to chart. They have um, psychologists and psychiatrists to kind of address emotional issues as well. So it's a wonderful, wonderful resource. All of these physicians have, you know, sworn that they will work according to the teachings of the magisterium, mm -hmm. and um, that we will honor God in everything. Do. So it's a wonderful group. I'm so, so proud to be a part of them. And uh, for as far as telemed, I definitely, there are certain places that have relaxed, you know, where they're allowing us to practice without a license. So if you have a license in Pennsylvania, you can practice in a numerous other states. But anybody that wants me to help them and that I don't have license to practice in their state, I always refer to the other docs at CatholicDoctor.com. I love to hear that. It's uh, things have been changing so much in a better direction, I think, in medicine and also in the pro-life world. Uh, I'm so grateful to you and also good people uh, in my in the greater Philadelphia here, area here and beyond. I have to mention a wonderful organization that I know you're also connected with. It's the Pro-Life Union of Greater Philadelphia. I wondered if you could talk about your collaboration with them. Pro-Life Union is an amazing group of people. It's really kind of like an umbrella organization where a lot of different groups that are participating in pro-life come together to kind of be refreshed. It doesn't, you know, tell them what they have to do or what they don't have to do, but it kind of helps to link all of these groups together so that people can learn from one another and collaborate with one another with ease. Um, I think a part of Satan's work is trying to pit us against one another and say, oh, my work is more important than your work, or, you know, I'm, I'm going to do things my way and not your way. But really, we all get so much further when we collaborate with one another. We don't try and recreate the wheel. We learn from what other people have done and what mistakes they have had along the way, and we don't walk through those same pitfalls. So... The Pro-Life Union is amazing in that it supports um, the Guiding Star Mother's Home as well. So they have this beautiful home where single moms with children can be there. They can have support, they can have education, some structure, and they um, really thrive there. And then they help them to move on to more independent type of living with their children. Um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful organization. And there are several mother's homes like that in Philadelphia. There's Our Lady's House. There's um, Mother Margaret Mary Home. So there's many, many places for these women to go to. We have lots of resources. Yeah, I love the Pro-Life Union. And the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation, where I'm the director, we're also in collaboration with them. And I believe their website is prolifeunion.org. Now, right. if I'm wrong, correct me, but I do think it is. So I would invite people to check it out because there's really no group quite like them, uh, at least in the area where we live in the Philadelphia area. So it's really great. You know, when we all come together, we can do so much to protect human life. I wanna make a shout out to a friend of both yours and mine who's there almost every Saturday to pray. It's uh, Mickey Kelly. He's also on our board of directors for the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation and grateful to him and other wonderful people who make it a point to pray for the unborn, uh, to just pray that that mom would, would rethink. Because you know what, it, sometimes when you make a decision 
that winds up being a wrong decision. Years later, you look back and say, you know what? I never should have done that, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what you're there for. You're there to, to reach out and say, God loves you and, and we love you. And we care enough, not just to care about whether you say yes or no to life, but what happens afterwards. Because I know Dr. Monique, a lot of times people will say things that, well, what about after the fact? Will you care about that baby when the baby's a year old or two years old? Uh, I wondered if you could share on that because I know you do. And I know that the other organizations care as well. Yeah, especially recently, we have started implementing teams for these women. So once a woman chooses life, the next step, as soon as we verify that this baby is you know, thriving in her womb and that she indeed wants some community support, we straight away put out kind of a, a, a letter to all of these people within the Sidewalk Servant community, 40 Days for Life community, Facebook community, and we say, hey, you know, there is this person, she is in this situation, and she really needs some support, and she needs a community. Who wants to be a part of it? And everybody comes with their own um, special talents and their special gifts that they can share with this person. So God, I, I always feel like God handpicks these people because what we find is one person out of that group will volunteer to be the lead and that person will directly interact with the individual so that she's not too overwhelmed. And then that person is responsible for talking to them and finding out what are their greatest needs? What are the things that we can start to kind of knock off that list? and how can we help this person in a really tangible way and they make this list they bring that to the initial team and the people within the team try and figure out how can they like address all of those issues and if there's anything that they can't address then they bring that back to me and to our greater group and then we put that out once again and say okay this is specifically what the need is who can help us with this like it might be you know this mom wants to learn this certain skill so that she can then apply for this job who knows how to teach her this or it might be mother's day is coming up and this mom has never really been appreciated for anything her children are all very small they're too small to go out and purchase something for her her, her husband or her father of the baby has taken off on her she's a single mom at this point and her relatives really aren't interested in honoring her in that way right now and so for these people to be the ones that think about hey it's mother's day and she's a mother what can we do to make her feel special and you know they might chip in a few dollars and purchase something for her or send her some flowers or send her a gift through amazon but something small like that that just really makes the person feel loved and our goal is that this community walks with them for at least a year or two years. And I honestly don't see knowing the people who are involved once they have, you know, created bonds with this individual and they've become a part of this person's family. I don't see any of them really wanting to step away, but just being that additional community for this individual so that they know that, you know, we see the beauty in them and that we honor them for choosing life and for just being the person that God created them to be. So it's so great to hear. Uh, I wondered if we could also touch on another topic and that's young people that aren't educated enough about the dignity of who they are uh, and something called theology of the body, which some of you may already know quite a bit about, and maybe you don't. Uh, if you don't know anything about it, please uh, Google it, find out. A uh, gentleman by the name of Christopher West, of course, uh, theology of the body came from uh, Pope John Paul II. We're so grateful. Uh, but I know that theology of the body is something that in having to do with pro-life, the dignity of who you are, in making those decisions when you're a young person, um, sometimes poor decisions are made. And, and it does lead to that, that point where a person is contemplating abortion. And on that topic, we have uh, the abortion pill as well. The, or, or I should say the abortion, there's the, the abortion pill and then the abortion pill reversal. So I wondered if you could speak a little bit about that because um, you know, some, some young people may think, well, if I, if I have an abortion, you know, or I'm sorry, if I get pregnant, I can take the abortion pill. It doesn't have to be a surgical abortion. It's not so bad. It is bad. So I wondered if you could talk about that. 
you know, I think the best example of what somebody goes through with an abortion pill abortion was actually shown very clearly in Unplanned. And that is a pretty gruesome scene. There's a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort, a lot of bleeding, and you're basically having this abortion on your own at home in the privacy of your home, but without the support of any medical assistance or anybody to help you out or um, just to take care of you. And it, it's just a horrible thing after you abort your child to then have to pick it up and flush it down the toilet. I mean, it, it's gruesome, it's horrible. And I can't imagine having to do that. And I don't think anybody could possibly be prepared for having to do that. Um, I completely agree with you. The, the root of pro-life is trying to educate people to make good decisions so that they don't end up in a position where they have to make a choice for abortion. It's all about making really beautiful, amazing choices that help you to have that 97% chance at a successful marriage when you choose chastity before marriage. And I, I definitely am so blessed to have the opportunity to speak to a lot of young people about sexual integrity and choosing that rather than choosing what Planned Parenthood and society tends to put out there in the magazines. Um, I always like to talk to girls and boys, especially about, you know, the idea of when you, you know, there was a, a really fantastic group called Thirsting for Truth. And um, the gentleman that started that group has an amazing story of saving your next kiss on your lips for your wedding day. And he and his girlfriend did that. And it just completely changed their relationship and changed their lives. And so I always steal that from him. And I always tell all of my patients, all of the people that I encounter, the most important thing you could ever choose is to save your next kiss on your lips for your wedding day. Because when you do that, and when you make that statement that I am not going to have sex before my wedding night, automatically it divides society or the people that you're dating into three groups. So there's the users who the minute that you say that I'm saving my next kiss on my lips for my wedding day, they say, oh my gosh, you're way too much of a hassle. I can get what I want elsewhere. And they leave you alone, which is such a blessing. And then you have the three monthers who say, oh, you are a challenge and I'm going to break you. And so they are on their best behavior for about three months. They'll hold your hand, they'll kiss you on the cheek, they'll kiss you on the forehead, they'll want to go to church with you, they'll want to meet your family, they'll do have all the right answers for everything. But at the three-month mark, somewhere around there, then they start saying, hey, baby, don't you think you owe me? Don't you think I've been so good? Haven't I shown you that I love you? Don't you want to show me that you love me? And all of things are the bells and whistles that should be going off in your brain saying, hey, you're the three monther. You're the one that the doctor was talking about. And then you can ask them to leave. But sometimes the three monthers, for the first time in their life, they're experiencing this new, fresh type of relationship where somebody is actually loving them for who they are, honoring them at every moment, never using them in any sense of the word. And they actually like it. And that three monther can convert to become a good person. And um, then you have, you know, the third group is the good people. And those are the ones that th they say, okay, you don't want to kiss on your lips and you don't want to have sex. Well, I still want to get to know you. I want to know who you are. And that's the kind of, you can have a conversation that is deep and surpasses the fluff of a normal relationship then you'll never really be able to talk about anything, like all of the hard issues, all of the really controversial things that come up in marriage and in life, you need to be able to have those conversations. You need to know exactly what somebody believes and uh, you never get to those conversations if you're stuck on wearing these rose colored glasses and mm -hmm. perfect. No, you need to have the tough conversations and understand who you are and who they are. And none of that happens once you become sexually intimate. It's just, mm. you live in this kind of fluffy zone. 
it makes a lot of sense too. And for those who are watching right now, I mean, you also can look at some of the immodesty that we see, which we may not think too much about, but on to something like Instagram and young people. I mean, I happen to have two daughters who are, you know, on Instagram and, you know, I know that they're faced with that stuff all the time of what they see from other people and just the way that they, um, try to show their bodies and their selves off so much that it's um, just wrong. You know, I mean, who wants that? You know, you want people to love you for who you are, not just for how well you can show off yourself um, and, and your body or whatever on, on social media yeah, in front of I everyone. Always, so yeah, definitely. I always tell my girls that, you know, at some point you might look this way now, but at some point you're not going to look the way you look. So you want to make sure that the person that you choose to spend the rest of your life with is not in love with your exterior, but is in love with your mind, your heart, and your soul. Because those are the enduring aspects of yourself. And those are the things that will always be there, what, no matter what you look like on the outside. And otherwise, if they're only with you because of how you look, that means when you no longer look this way, they're going to be looking somewhere else. And is that what you want? And no, you said you it perfectly. It's so true. And we're just giving you, for people who are watching and listening, giving you something to think about with your kids. And even if you are a younger person, um, just thinking about what you really want to, to show people about who you are on social media. You know, especially we're coming into the summer, you know, and people are on the beach and, you know, and, and uh, we're not dressed the way we are in the winter time. So it's just something to consider uh, that modesty is important. And it is important I, and it does yeah. have a connection to pro-life. It really does. It has a connection to, uh, to pro-life, doesn't it? Yeah. Speaking of, I would highly recommend you can go on Culture of Life 1972 and it is a pro-life fashion brand. And they have an entire line for the summer with conservative swimsuits that actually cover up and some of them have a little bit of a deeper neck here and there but they have nice like cover-ups that you can put on top of those as well they have little skirts so you can get beautiful conservative swimsuits and swimwear out there you don't have to wear things that are overly revealing that's right can you repeat that website again for our viewers and people who are listening on yeah, a podcast it's culture of life 1972 C-O-L 1972, and they're named 1970 because that was the last year of Culture of Life before Roe v. Wade came into place. So it's a fantastic group. Abby Johnson is one of their representatives, um, and they're actually looking for another one right now, but amazing pro-life fashion brand. They have beautiful clothes and great swimwear and flip-flops and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff. I'm so glad this topic has come up because the root, as you said, the root cause of, of the pro-choice generation, or, you know, we're hopefully now we're becoming more a generation of life, right? And I think we are in many ways, but just to looking at those root causes, um, how you can change uh, yourself and even make an effect on your family and people that you know, uh, consider modesty, because modesty is also extremely important. So, I wondered if, uh, I, I just want to review again, all of your different connections and websites, because we are going to be coming to uh, close to the end of the program. I'm so grateful to all of you for joining me here and Dr. Monique Ribeiro. Uh, this is Journeys in Faith with Anne DeSantis. So let me uh, announce those websites again. So we'll start out with her uh, practice, which is naturalwomenshealth.com. She's located in the Philadelphia area. So make sure that you check out that website. As she said, you know, they're doing telemedicine, not just for people in the Philadelphia area. It can be anywhere in the United States. So you could be a patient, especially if you have uh, United Healthcare. I know you said you mentioned that that particular health insurance has um, been pretty, pretty good in, in being able to uh, allow mm -hmm. that or have approvals for it. So the other one is uh, sidewalkservantsphilly.com. That's another one to check out. And we also have ladieslovelife.com, which was the conference that she was involved with. And of course, we mentioned the 40 Days for Life website. 
no matter where you are, you can get involved in praying with 40 Days for Life. Can you tell us that website again, Dr. Monique? That's 40 Days for Life .com. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, another thing is after this show, you will have an opportunity to watch uh, a special segment with Dr. Monique Rivera and I, five minute segment. And it's going to be uh, extra, two extra ideas and tips that you can become more involved in pro-life. But you have to go to a special website to see it. You have to go to patreon.com slash patchwork heart ministry. And there'll be an opportunity for you to watch uh, a five minute video with Dr. Monique Ribeiro and I. So I wondered, Dr. Monique, if you had any closing thoughts before we end. I think the only one thing that we wanted to mention, which we didn't get around to, was the information for abortion pill reversal. So oftentimes think that you take the abortion pill, that it's just as definitive as having a surgical abortion and that you know all hope is lost. But the reality is after taking an abortion pill, you have up to 72 hours to reverse that abortion pill. And there have been many successful reversals that have happened um, all over the country. But even through my office, we've had several and we've just been so blessed to meet these children and to take care of them. Um, so highly, highly recommend just spread the word. The website that they would need to go to is abortionpillreversal.com. So abortion. I'm so glad. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. It's so important. Please connect with Dr. Monique Rivera. She's also a, a social media friend of mine. And uh, I definitely invite you to come back on, on this show. Now I have a couple more plugs, if you will, everybody. Go um, so please go on to Facebook and, and like Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis. That's also going to be on Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram. And also a special podcast that I do every single week with somebody who actually is helping to produce this program for us as far as the podcast, Bill Snyder. It's called Sewing Hope, S-E-W-I-N-G, Hope Podcast. It's on Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern and Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, and it's all about sowing hope into broken hearts. So Dr. Monique, I want you to be a guest on the Sowing Hope podcast, definitely. Yeah, and also one last, uh, two last plugs, if I could. So please like Fiat Ministry Network. The producer is Kent Kohoski. I'm so grateful to him for uh, producing this uh, program this evening. We're gonna be on every Friday at 8.30 to 9.30, a live show. And also my friend, Bill Snyder. Hi, Bill. And uh, as I said, my podcast host, and this will be on Podbean and TuneIn as a podcast as well. So once again, Dr. Monique Ribeiro, thank you so much for joining us on Journeys in Faith. Thank you so much for having me. God bless. See you next week, everybody. Journeys of Faith is a production of Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry. For more information about Journeys of Faith, email info at fiatministrynetwork.tv. And be sure to friend, follow, and like us on social media. Just search Journeys in Faith with Anne DeSantis.